Hey guys, what's up? Scotch Duck here once again. Right, we are now on to the 3DS game collection, which is the final Nintendo console that we got. And uh, I've got to say, the 3DS is probably my favourite Nintendo handheld system. It was uh, just like the, the 3DS and the DS were the only two that I really got properly into, you know? And I just feel like I got more into stuff that was on the 3DS than the DS. So it's like, it's a thin margin, but it is definitely one. And uh, I think I have more games, I think. So let's get into it. And uh, I'm going to show these off first, because I had to pull them off from the top of the shelf, and they're fucking heavy, and it's like, why do I own these? God damn it. But uh, I own this special edition of Bravely Default. Ouch, it's fucking landing on my face. Uh, it's got that in it. And I own this special edition of Bravely Second End Lair. It's got that in it. Um, but yeah, uh, Bravely Default was one thing that you're definitely going to hear me rant about a lot in this video was that the 3DS represented a time in my life where I was particularly avid about localization and games coming out of Japan because typically those were the games that I really wanted to play. So whenever something was like announced for Japan uh, and wasn't like getting any talked about being localized, I was particularly avid, you know, I was coming fresh off of like Operation Rainfall you know, Xenoblade, Last Story, Pandora's Tower, that stuff. So anytime something was getting announced, I was just like, where the fuck is it? You know, I was I was always moaning about it. And yeah, eventually we would get them, and Bravely Default was definitely one of them. And me, I was just like, day one, Bravely Default, let's go. And uh, it's a fucking fantastic game. I, I love it to death. It's like my top 10 3DS games, I think. Bravely Second, I don't know what happened, it makes, it makes some changes that I'm not the biggest fan of, and I actually never did beat it, I got right to the end too, but I did not beat Bravely Second, and I've, it's another thing I've always felt bad for. Um, Octopath Traveler for the Switch was sort of seen as a successor to the Bravely series, uh, I think only like a few of like the head staff went over from Bravely to that game, so it's not really a successor. And supposedly a new Bravely game is coming, probably for the Switch, so I will definitely be keeping an eye out for that. I do love the Bravely series as a whole, uh, just that second one didn't quite hit the same spot, so yeah. Let's see how many of these are examples of games that I was just like, oh my god, where is it? Uh, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this first actually, I'm just off of doing that DS video. Here is what I think is my Atlas collection. Uh, I'm hoping I've not, like, missed some of them. I probably have, but I'm just wanting to, like, talk about them. Uh, Atlas, because there's so many games here that I just have never played. Uh, except this one. Uh, reading the story of Perfect Chronology, a remake of the DS game, and it was the game that finally got me to actually beat that fucking game, and it's really, really good. Etrian Odyssey 4, the only Etrian Odyssey game I put considerable time into, and I, in fact, I think on my, like, 3DS log, it's still, like, in my top 10 most played 3DS games. I just poured so much time into it. But this was another one. This was a game that was, like, announced to be out in uh, America and Japan for ages, and because the 3DS was region locked, I was raging. It's like, why can't I play this? And that probably is what lent a lot of, like, hype that wasn't really there with me. I'm not saying I dislike Etrian Odyssey. I'm just, uh... Just not my thing, <laughs> but uh, yeah, th th there's that. And another one, Soul Hackers. I've actually put quite a few hours into this one. Um, it's a re-release of a Sega Saturn game, really old Shin Megami Tensei game uh, that they decided to put out for the 3DS. And the style of it, and like the style of all the Shin Megami Tensei games are really good to be fair. So I'm definitely happy to have that for sure. Uh, with that said though, one game that we didn't get over here was this, Shin Megami Tensei 4. We got it digitally, and by the way, if you were to ask me of like five, six years ago, it's like, oh, you're not getting this game, but you're going to get it digitally. Is that okay? I, I'd be so mad if you told me that. I'd be like, that'd be like worse than not getting it at all to me somehow. You know, obviously you get it at all. It's better than not getting it at all, but just like, I was just so pro-localization and so pro physical releases, which, you know, it's weird, we've actually gotten better since then, I feel like we get a lot, a game can't just come out in Japan anymore, I don't know if it's because Japan's market has gotten so low, obviously games still do come out in Japan only, but if they're big titles, chances are they're definitely going to make appearance overseas now, 
uh, as is Shin Megami Tensei. You know we're getting Shin Megami Tensei 5 soon. I don't have Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, which was the sort of sequel to this one. And I did actually beat this, by the way, but it is one of the defining games that I just beat, I just chugged through it, you know? It was just like Bravely Second, if I'm honest, you know? I just beat it because I wanted to beat it, because again, it was like, I, I gotta beat this game, probably because I imported it from America, and it was not cheap, but uh, what have you. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey, Redux, I was just talking about this in the DS video. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna give this game up uh, or not, but uh, I like it, I do like it, I promise. Um, right, now here is, yeah, here's like all of my, I suppose I'll talk about this first. <coughs> Persona Q, never popped it in, it's a Persona fan service game from the Etrian Odyssey team. Uh, Persona Q2 is actually coming out in uh, June this year. Will I buy it? You bet your fucking ass I'll buy it. Am I going to play it? Probably not, because here's all the other Etrian Odyssey games. We got um, Etrian Odyssey 5, we got um, Etrian Odyssey Untold, which actually... And here's Etrian Odyssey Untold 2. These games actually have story mods, so I should be able to play them. But it almost feels like cheating, because that's not what Etrian Odyssey is. I have such a weird mindset with this. And here is Etrian Odyssey Nexus, which just came out, like, this month, pretty much. And uh, it's supposed to be like a best of the last past few Etrian Odyssey games, I guess, with like loads of returning classes and areas and stuff. And again, I wasn't not going to buy it. I wasn't not going to support the series that I already have so much of. So, yeah, I just, <coughs> I still have it. <laughs> one day, one day, maybe I'll get properly into Etrian Odyssey. It just seems so far away, though. Whatever, let's get on to the rest of these games, shall we? Uh, let's talk about some boxes first, actually. Kid Icarus Uprising. I don't give a shit about how, like, uh, I didn't like the controls. This is one of these games where it's, like, questionable, not bad, but questionable controls didn't detract in the slightest from what was already there, and what was already there was a hilarious, epic, fun game that had so much, like, thought put into it. Uh, so much like heart put into it, quite frankly, that it's just one of my favourite 3DS games, without a doubt. It's like, I, I really want that, this series to continue, you know, I want Sakurai to make another Kid Icarus, you know, I think he would really do it justice. Um, and the other, like, box one I got here is um, uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. And, uh, yeah, this is the collector's edition, and I also got the uh, Skull Kid, which you see in my videos somewhere. Where, where's Skull Kid? Where, there's Skull Kid. Uh, yeah, there's Skull Kid. I got one of these. So, yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. Uh, love Majora's Mask to death, and uh, it's really good on 3DS. Um, right. Uh, next up we have... I really wanted to get the other one. Not this, actually, but here's a story of seasons. The 3DS is where I fell the fuck in love with Harvest Moon. In fact, I really want to, like, find them. I really want to, like, talk about them in one go because Story of Seasons is where the Harvest Moon series basically went to when whoever has the rights to Harvest Moon couldn't agree on certain shit and uh, decided, okay, you guys go make your own franchise, which is basically Harvest Moon. Here it is. Harvest Moon 3D, A New Beginning. I love this game to death. It, is, it was my very first Harvest game. It got me into the series and it's just, I just, I fell the fucking love. I really did. And, uh, you know, Story of Seasons, this is the new Harvest Moon game, guys. For those of you who don't know, you really, really should play this. And um, I know it's here somewhere. Fuck. Sorry, can you talk amongst yourselves for a minute while I find this fucking game? Ah, uh, where are you? Look, there was one on the 3DS, alright? The sequel was called Story of Seasons. Here it is, here it is. Story of Seasons, Trio of Towns. This was just like more Harvest Moon, really, and it was just as good, and I put just as much time into it. Although you may be asking, why the cellophane? Because, I have these over here, both games came out in America months, maybe even more than a year before they came out in Europe. So in both cases, I pre-ordered the fuckers from America. And these, these are actually the cartridges that have like all of my hours on them, you know, because I didn't really even... I meant to go back to them and play them on like the PAL copies, but... They're such time sinks, these games, as good as they are. But yeah, 
I really, really want another Story of Seasons for the Switch. I really cannot wait to see if that becomes a thing. Uh, no, that crossover game that just got announced in the Japanese Nintendo Direct, that doesn't count. I've seen that. It's like, nope, that's not Story of Seasons. At least not the Story of Seasons I want. So, yeah, that was a lot of gushing about Harvest Moon, but I love them. I absolutely love them. Here's uh, Hatsune Miku, Project Mirai. Um, this was another one that was out in Japan, and not only was it out in Japan and we didn't get it, but it was sort of like being promoted at the height of my Hatsune Miku uh, craze, you know? Back when I was, like, super obsessed with, like, Vocaloid stuff, and at heart I'm still obsessed, you know, I'm still a fan, for sure, you know? I've just, I'm just learned not to be as, uh, shout about it as much, I suppose. But yeah, this is potentially the best Hatsune Miku game there is, you know, it's like, I love the art style, the song list is brilliant, it's just a really, really good game all around, not just like a Vocaloid game, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's another big favourite of mine. Um, here is Kirby Triple Deluxe, the Kirby game's really good on the 3DS, you know, um, they all kind of use like the same engine, I should say, the one that they kind of reused from... Return to Dreamland, Kirby's Adventure Wii, I'm, I'm, I gotta breeze through these, we got a lot of games to cover, it's Kirby, it's Kirby, oh fuck, I can't quite uh, breeze through this one, Senran Kagura Burst, now, the thing about this game guys, okay, you're gonna have to believe me, because obviously Senran Kagura, it's practically quite a decently successful franchise over here now, and in the west it kinda started with this game, at least I think it did, uh, and the reason I own this, guys, okay, I swear to God, this is the reason. I'm not, I'm not knocking, like, the core assets of this series, you know, like, the, the things that this series does, you know, I'm not whacking it. I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's just that this came out physically over here and not in America. As soon as I heard that, I was like... There is no way I am not supporting this. I'm going to go into the shops, I'm going to have a big smile on my face, and I'm going to say, in a loud and proud voice, give me a copy of Senran Kagura for the 3DS. And I did. The guy looked at me funny, and I walked out with it. So, yeah, that's the, that's why I own that. The game itself is not that good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay, it's just, just not great. So, yeah. My screen's all dark, hopefully that readjusts in a minute. Uh, here's a Shanty and the Pirate's Curse. Um, this is not my only physical version of the game, I have it physically on PS4 as well. But this one came out first and I figured, eh, I'll pick this up. But yeah, probably the best Shanty game for sure. I'm a big Shanty fan. So, yeah. Uh, Super Smash Bros. to the 3DS, a very playable version of Smash 4, by the way. I spent a lot of time on this game, it was just cool having it on the go, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, 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 a lot of people whack this version, especially after the Wii U one came out. It's really good, okay? It's really good. Uh, here is Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. Well, I think the, you know, the full title is... No, oh, it is Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good game, but it's one of those things where... You know what? I... I keep moaning about Professor Layton and say how stupid it gets at the end of the games. You know, that's always been a thing I've noticed about Professor Layton. And the stupidity goes up so high in this one. The rest of the game is so good, then it ends so stupidly. But I was such a big Ace Attorney fan, and I did like Professor Layton. And this was another one that was, like, announced, and we did, we, it took years to actually come out over here. And thank fucking it did, you know, because... I'm not, like, upset that I played it or whatever. You know, as much as I will, like, mock certain aspects of it, it's still, it was still a joy to play, honestly, God. So, yeah. I could talk about this one for an hour, but we got to brace through these. We are, like, barely a third through these games, for fuck's sake. Rayman 3D, really shit version of Rayman 2. It's, yeah. Um, oh, fuck, okay. I'm going to start separating these by series. Uh, Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, a really good game, but I almost have like a bit of a bitter spot in my heart for it because it kind of like started the trend that it really brought out the 2D elitists for Zelda. I don't hate 2D, I love 2D Zelda, I love this game, but you know, when you could like do dungeons out of order, that was kind of like treated as like, 
the series is never going to get any better than this because it went back and it's, I, I don't know, I had complicated feelings, okay, let's just move on. Um, here's a Professor Layton Miracle Mask, really good Professor Layton game. Um, yeah, <laughs> Super Monkey Ball 3D, it was a launch title. It's alright, it's, it's alright. Um, Paper Mario Sticker Star, my opinion is the same as everybody else's. Fuck it. Um, Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm, really good game, actually, really good uh, fun rhythm game with all the Final Fantasy music, so I'm not gonna whack that one. Uh, Mario Luigi's Bowser's Inside Story, I beat this not too long ago, uh, it's really good, I enjoyed it a lot. <coughs> um, Sega 3D Classics Collection, this is basically a cartridge with all of the M2 versions of Mega Drive games that they released on the 3DS. Mega goodbye for me, that's for certain, so yeah, uh, there was other versions that got released over in Japan, I think, but that was all that we got over here, sadly. Um, Theater Rhythm Mega Mix, yeah, more... Wait, I said Theater Rhythm, this is Rhythm Paradise Mega Mix, shut the fuck up, Donald. Um, uh, Crush 3D, this was a sequel to a PSP game where you're like playing... With 3D blocks, you go from 3D to 2D. It's been so long since I actually played it. Uh, but it was definitely a game that like felt right on the 3DS. Because it's a very early 3DS game. And it was quite pretty good. Pretty good, so, yeah. Um, Sonic Lost World. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I could, I'm not even going to start rambling about it. Because we could be here all day and it'll just turn into a Sonic fan rant. Uh, here it is. Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. Think like Rhythm Heaven meets Professor Layton meets Space Channel 5 and you basically have this game, you know? And I feel like this is a game that if I went back to it today, I'd, I'd like it even more. Because when I first played it, I thought to myself, maybe I was just so used to like other games coming, like Professor Layton and stuff, but I kind of almost saw it as that sort of ripoff. But it is actually, I think this game actually has a decent cult following almost, you know, you see, I just see it crop up from time to time. Definitely, definitely from time to time, not all the time, but yeah, friggin' thief. Rhythm, Rhythm Thief. I should play it, I should replay it. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2, one of my favourite 3DS games. Love it to death. I don't care if it's mission structured, it's still loads of fun. Uh, here's Rune Factory 4, an American version, because we never got it physically over here. Obviously I was going to support it. Dead or Alive Dimensions, a sort of like best of compilation of Dead or Alive 1 through 4. Uh, I'm quite fond of the Dead or Alive games, so I wanted to give it a go. And uh, yeah, it was good. They censored the cover though. You can't see Kasumi's panties anymore, but apart from that, it was quite good. Um, Sonic Generations, play the console version. Um, oh fuck, Dr. Lutrec and the Forgotten Knights. This was another Professor Layton like ripoff that came out, or at least you could tell it was very influenced by it. And it's such a... I never got too far in it because it, it almost has like a sort of Pokemon system to it and I could never get far in it. I remember always getting like really stuck. And yeah, it's, it's a weird one this one, really weird. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Not much to say about that. Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. Um, here we have um, Layton, Mystery Journey, Catriel, and the Millionaire's Conspiracy. This was basically the... It's a sort of spin-off of Professor Layton where you play as his daughter. Um, I never actually cared to beat this one. Uh, it wasn't really... Because it's getting like split up into little stories and... I don't know, it wasn't really as enjoyable as the other Professor Layton games, at least to me. So, yeah, maybe I should go back to it. They actually announced like a deluxe version of this for the Switch, I believe. So, maybe I'll return to it there. I don't know. Um, here we have a uh, Fire Emblem Awakening. Again, probably very, like, top 10 3DS game for me. It's really, really good. Um, I don't love it as much as most people, if I'm honest, but... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it really, like, brought the series. In fact, I almost dislike it because I don't like where the series is right now. Okay, I don't like the way Fire Emblem Three Houses looks. I hated what they did with Fire Emblem Echoes and made three fucking different games. 
and I didn't like what they did. Uh, Fire Emblem Fates, sorry, this is Fire Emblem Echoes, which is a remake of one of the earlier Fire Emblems, apparently. And this one wasn't as bad, but they did monetize the fuck out of it with random bits of DLC, and uh, I didn't get too far in this one either. So, yeah, I'm, can you see a pattern here? Jesus. Um, here's my case for Majora's Mask, I should put that back in the box. Um, here we have uh, Dragon Quest VIII, my favourite Dragon Quest game. I bought this kind of just to have it, you know, I haven't played it because it's like a fucking 80 hour game that I played on the PS2. So, maybe one day, but certainly not now. And uh, that was another one that we, like, were gonna get, but just, it took ages to come out. Uh, here's, that. Uh, might as well go on to this, and uh, another one was Dragon Quest VII. Now, this I actually did play, I put like over a hundred hours into this one, and it's one of the better Dragon Quest games I, I find. It's so good, so good. Um, Here's uh, Tales of the Abyss, still my favourite Tales of game, and Tales of is definitely a series that I've, like, gotten a bit tired of in recent years, I don't know what's happened, that's just, it, it's just what happens with a series, I guess, but uh, I, this was the one that definitely brought me into the light with the series, and I still have a lot of fun memories of it, so, yeah, Tales of the Abyss. Um, well, here's a here's Bravely Default, I should put that back in its uh, box, or is this the same... Is this to be sold? This doesn't have not to be sold. Oh wait, it does have not to be sold separately on it. Never mind, never mind. I'll uh, put that over here to put it in the box later. Super Mario 3D Land it was alright. I, I didn't dig it as much as most. Probably because it's it's got new Super Mario Brothers uh, syndrome. I just think about it and I think of how much I didn't like 3D World on the Wii U. So it, that sort of like enthusiasm carries over to that game and it's not very fair. What can I say? I don't know. Okay, no, so let's talk about these games. Here was definitely a game that was like announced and it was just like, when are we getting it? When are we getting it? Why are we no getting it? Why are we no getting it? You're getting it. Yes. Project Cross Zone and Project Cross Zone 2. Project Cross Zone is a series that takes like Sega, Capcom and Namco characters and puts them into this like really like not very uh, robust, but a, def a definitely dumb and surprisingly enjoyable uh, turn-based strategy system, okay? And uh, 2 improves on a lot. I never actually beat the first one, I hate to say, because it does get very long and very repetitive, and you're pretty much only there for the fan service at, this, at, at certain points. But with Project Cross Zone 2, they really did make a good effort to make the gameplay better and the fan service a lot more, like, fun. In fact, I gotta say, guys, friggin', this is like my most wanted game for, one, well, one of my most wanted games for the Switch is a Project Cross Zone 3. Maybe even bringing like a fourth publisher into there, like maybe Square Enix. I guess, Konami, maybe, I don't know, but yeah, Project Cross Zone 3, I would want that so badly. Um, Mario Luigi Dream Team, the best Mario and Luigi game, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was really good. Uh, here is Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, one of the very, in fact, in terms of like packaged games, was there a single other new Nintendo 3DS exclusive that Nintendo put out? I'm not sure, but it was Xenoblade on the go, I wasn't going to say no to that, so yeah, awesome. Um, Metroid Samus Returns, really good, really good. Um, Professor Layton and the Azran Legacy, probably my second favourite Professor Layton game behind um, uh, Spectre's Call for the DS, but it's definitely one of the stupid ones near the end. I love how much I could rant about that. New Super Mario Brothers 2, fucking Animal Crossing. A game that I wish I'd gotten more into, like I say that about most games like this, because I already gushed about Story of Seasons and Harvest Moon. I feel like I could get so lost in an Animal Crossing game. It's just finding the time, I suppose. When that new one comes out in the Switch, we'll see what happens. Okay, um, Shinobi. Pretty good game, pretty good for an early 3DS game, you know. Um, yeah, Shinobi. I don't think it was actually the last Shinobi game we ever got, which is somewhat depressing. Uh, Kirby Planet Robobot. Is it Robobot? Yeah. It's more Kirby. It was really good. Um, 
Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and what came out around the same time was Star Fox 64 3D. What a name, eh? Both brilliant games. I'm definitely a much bigger fan of this one, if I'm being totally honest. It's like my, one of my favourite games of all time, you know? What an, what an interesting and unique opinion. I really liked Ocarina of Time. Who says that? Yeah, here's, a, here's Devil's Survivor Overclocked. I was talking about this in my last video. Uh, it's very kind of a lazy 3DS port, if I'm honest, you know, because all the actual action of the game happens on the bottom screen and it can't be in 3D. I guess that's what happens when you port over uh, a DS game, you know, but whatever, whatever. New Yoshi's Island. Nintendo had to stop putting like the word new into their games because it just like this this one's not very good. It's not very good. Oh fuck. Codename Steam. Who remembers this game? Okay, this was like by Intelligent Systems, uh, the Fire Emblem guys, and it was such a bizarre concept. You like played in the era of Abraham Lincoln. It had like a really cool silver era comic book art style. It was almost kind of like Valkyria Chronicles as well, but it just wasn't good. I'm real upset about this one. I just remember playing it and being like, no, this one's... Sorry, Intelligence Systems. You done goofed. Mario Kart 7. Again, all other Mario Kart opinions. Fantasy Life. A game by level 5. And, um... It was like... It's another like sort of slice of life game like Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon. Uh, but I just didn't get into it as much, so that's all I got to say on that, really. Um, right, Puzzle and Dragon Z and Puzzle Dragon Super Mario Bros. Edition. This was a 3DS port of a Japanese mobile game that was, like, super popular. Like, it was, at the time, like, I can't even remember the name at this point, so it was definitely, like, a sort of, like, bubble that already popped, but... I don't even think I played it, but you, even looking at the fucking gameplay, it's just like a color matching game, just like every other fucking phone game that's a hit, you know? So, yeah, that's, um, what can I say? What can I say? I just, they, it was popular enough that Nintendo was like, let's make one for the 3DS and put Mario in it. So I guess it must have done really well in Japan, at least, and it had enough of an impact on the market that they brought it over here. I just never popped it in, so, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and uh, last game, this is definitely a weird one to end on, um, Hakuoki Memories of the Shinsengumi. All I know about this game, guys, is that it is a, like, visual novel, dating sim sort of game, which is a reverse harem, meaning you play as a girl and you're going after boys. So, yeah, I bought this. I, I totally bought this, so yeah, never played it. Right, that is all of my DS collection. I'm just having a quick nose to make sure I've not missed anything out. I probably have. But yeah, my favorite Nintendo handheld. And the last Nintendo console that we're doing in this little series of videos. What will we move on to next? Probably PlayStation, but we'll see. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>